today's matchup. Rocks Tigers. Jin Air Green Wings. Beginning of the end. 2018 League of Legends Champions Korea Spring Split. Welcome back, OGN Legion. It's time to dive into our second match of the night, the final one here at OGN for the regular split. Before we get into playoffs, it's time for Rocks Tigers versus the Jin Air Green Wings. SKT's fate basically been sealed. It's in their own hands. Just have to beat Kongdu Monster in order to qualify for the playoffs. But KSV, despite the loss, they're not done yet. An upset here by the hand at the hands of Jin Air Green Wings could allow them to slide back in. We had everything to play for in our first series for KSV. Weren't able to get the win, had three chances to, and yet there is still the bailout, the Jin Air bailout that is so risky to hope for, but it's still an outside chance. If you look at the standings, notice that KSV are now at zero game score. So is Rox Tigers. So if Rox Tigers lose, they would be nine and nine, and they would be at best negative one. That means they would move below KSV. So the head to head between Rox and KSV, which Rox owns because uh, King Zone actually dropped a game. Doesn't matter. It's only about victory or loss. It needs to be a win from Rocks. Then they will be fourth place and have side selection in the wildcard match. If they lose by any scoreline, SKT is ready to go and could potentially jump to fourth place with a victory. Well, Jin Air here in Korea as an airline is known for their budget flights. Maybe they could be known here for a budget playoff qualification for the side of KSV. We'll see if they can pull it off. They're the former Robin Hood of the LCK, rob from the rich, give to the poor, and KSV after that first series certainly would qualify for that. But we'll go ahead and take a look here at the qualifications. Again, SK Telecom in a very nice spot if they can just take down Kongdu Monster, which given the record, I don't think is too big of an ask for them. Definitely, you're piecing that in together. Unfortunately, we don't get a whole roundup show to talk about what's happening, so we have yeah. to talk about the what-ifs and the half-truths and make educated opinions. Let's see if Rox can do it. It's been the story of Rox outperforming even the wildest expectations of this roster. They win, they move to fourth place, which is about five places higher than I had them ranked. It's been a huge rise for the Rox Tigers, and it's largely been with only a single roster, Achilles, so Kuzan twice, Mighty Bear twice, and together, both of those times, never separated. As Rocks Tigers have a starting five, they like very much. Yeah, so not gonna be Kuzan, not gonna be Mighty Bear, Lindrong and Songwon there. The old duo still holding it down in the top lane with Lava in mid, Songyun and Ki down in the bottom side of the map. Had that nice little interview with Songyun over at the other studio where his father actually came on camera. He says, I hope my son becomes a caster one day. Well, I hope his son plays Jinx again. That was a cool game we saw from the Rocks Tigers earlier this week. He has had a great season. Feels like he's finally paying off the promise we saw from Key as the one trick bard many years ago. Rocks Tigers leveling up in ways we couldn't expect in the cheerfuls here. Uh, awesome to see. Well, we see some new stuff. You'd imagine they just go for a greatest hit of the stuff that's been working. As their opponents, Jin Air, have nothing to play for except for the KSV hopes, you would say, and maybe even the SKT fans, hoping they can jump to fourth and get the side selection. Just getting my picture in my head here from Return of the King, Aragorn for Frodo, but this time it's for KSV as they charge into battle. Jin Air Green Wings will see if they can indeed rob from the rich one last time here, as they will be starting off with this roster. Not gonna be seeing Justice in the mid lane, it's just gonna be Grace making his return yet again. Been a really rough schedule for Jin Air. Last three, KSV, Afrika, King Zone. They were completely blown away by King Zone a couple of days ago. That doesn't necessarily mean as much. They're facing Rocks today who are similar in terms of their level of competition, but they are certainly not King Zone. Will they get to play real League of Legends today? There's a real chance they can do the favor and actually get KSV back into the playoffs to set up a World Finals rematch in our first game, the wild card match. And it's all about the fact that they will not play again till the summer season. So why not leave their fans with the glad plane and no more sad plane on the season? It'd be a very big glad plane. It'd be a poggers plane at the end of the split here. It's been 
up and down performances here from Jin Air. Got the win over MVP, but dropped a game. Lost to KSV, lost to Afrika. And it's just been pretty much losses all the way down until you go back all the way to that first time they played against the Afrika Freaks where they 2 0 them. So they need to channel that energy yet again here on the Rift to take down the Rocks Tigers. What well, is the roster that played in that series? So there's at least that to talk about. There's some really good stuff from Lava on the Talia and Umti Skarner in that series. They'd love to have a Olaf on their side, as that has been one of the good luck charms for the Jin Air Green Wings. A lot to pick for. Look at this, actually. Pretty tight knit. 0 .003 KDA actually separates the two teams as Jin Air is just a hair in front. You can see where the roll distribution is at. Umti's been up and down, and sadly, the lack of King T has meant that Umti lower than Song Wan, but predictably, Teddy, the man who can always pick up a CS or two, is ahead of Song Yun. Well, Umti is certainly going to be the biggest player I think that we're, we're going to be watching here in this series for his performance because if Umti can pop off, if he can get, uh, you know, channel performance like we see, saw from him in days past, I think back to that Camille jungle from him where he was absolutely dominating on the Rift. If he can have that level of performance, then that is what Jenner can really utilize to push themselves in front of the Rocks Tigers and try to get the upset. 2017 was the reason that we did not really count Rocks Tigers into the calculation for anything yeah. in 2018. First round Robin, it was pretty competitive. So, what does this all mean for the Rocks Tigers? They are in better form, but they have struggled since 8.4. They have two match wins, one over Kongdu, but a really impressive win over KSV themselves. Is the reason they're in this situation where they have a very real chance of making it through to the playoffs at the expense of KSV if SKT goes on to be Kongdu tomorrow. We'll start with the jungle matchup we mentioned. There's definitely good games from Umti, but they've been few and far between recently. Needs to get an Olaf to get the KDA rolling. And some of the other picks, the Jacks especially, have let him down. Yeah, it hasn't been the best. And getting the Olaf into his hands here in this series is going to be certainly a surprise if they're able to pull that one off. You would expect that Rox Tigers would go ahead, leave it for themselves, take it in the first round, or just have it banned away. So we'll see where their priorities lie as MT still just keeps having a bit of fun. MT's a fun guy to talk to. Definitely a lot of personality around him, but he'll be frustrated at his recent performances and want to show us his best foot forward. And we go to the mid lane. Two of our young guns here as Lava is still adjusting himself and realizing, oh, I'm on the camera. Mom, get the camera. As, uh, yeah, the Galio is going to be contested between both. Azir, we know the Talia also will see a return as we've had quite the Talia play in our first series. So I'd hope to see more of it. And Lava and Grace are both very potent at it. Yeah, interestingly enough, you know, we have our first and second players here for their position as far as the damage permitted is concerned. So it should be a lot of trading back and forth between these guys, depending on the picks. We see something a bit tankier like that Galio to come through. And maybe that figure will go down a little bit for either side. They've both played nine games of Azir, so they're cheating on the DPM yeah. side as that man knows about damage. Where are the fans at? Difficult one between two competitive teams. Not the bad. Rocks fans are there, but the Jin Air fans have also come a voting. There's not much to speak between these two teams. Not a massive fan base for Rocks because they still have not been able to go on a prolonged winning streak, making playoffs for the first time since Peanut and Friends ran around on their roster. Will be a good start to putting up the fan base for the new Rocks Tigers. For sure. I think it's one of the closest fan votes that we've had so far during the split. So, very tight knit there. 57 to 43. We'll see if the fans are correct and their assumption that the Rocks Tigers will walk away with a victory here today, or if Jin Air can pull off the miracle here. And I'm going to say I'm a 65-35 man. I think Rocks Tigers have it. I might even go 70-30. But that's because Jin Air were really at their wits end earlier this week. Things can turn around. Jin Air are by no means a bad team. But I need to see a game one victory to believe it. Rocks Tigers are phenomenal against KSV earlier this week. But many teams have gone so far and yet choked at the last time of asking. Rocks Tigers have the simplest of equations. Win a best of three, rewrite your path into the playoffs, lose, and you'll be watching on as likely KSV and SKT go forward. Nothing to choke on if you're breathing in clean air. That's what they're going to be looking for here today, as you like to put that one. Song Yun. Seen some great stuff from this guy in the past. Has been off in the backbone of the Rocks Tigers. If we don't have Lava on something like the Talia, which he's been impressive on all year long. But bringing out picks like the Jinx, things that have been eluding us, things that we thought we were going to see patches and patches ago when she got buffed up. 
now bubbling to the surface at the hands of Sangyun. He's going up against Teddy, who has been one of our gem ADCs here in the LCK. And while we get the audio track looping, I see coaches in the booth. That probably means we're going to pick and ban for game number one. Only three best of threes left in the regular season. One today, two tomorrow. This one all about the playoffs between Rox Tigers and Jin Green. Seems like we're ready for that pick and ban. Let's go ahead and jump into it with Rock starting off over on that blue side. See where a certain Viking goes in this draft, as I imagine it's not going to go through the ban phase. When it comes to picks, Rox Tigers are one of the best Zaya teams. Sang Yun, a fantastic Zaya player. But as I mentioned that, a blue side Zaya ban. None of this, they say. We'll go ahead and ban that one away. Peculiar does suggest that they want to Reach Maybe for go for the Olaf. A jungler is what I was going to say. That would follow the logic. Don't want to give away Zaya Rakan as a first round on red side. But it is something they've used very, very well this season. Rox follows that up. Had a lot of mid lane bans recently. See if the Galio joins. But so far, Rox seem very happy to leave open things like the Galio. GP taken off the board. Salt from Cuve in our first series. Priority's been falling away a little bit there. And also, didn't see the kleptomancy from that gangplank. So it was a bit of a shift. Another ADC off the board as Varus joins the Zaya. I don't want Ox Tigers to reach for the Varus. Does mean that a jungler first pick gets even likelier as we work our way through to the first pick here. Final ban from Rox Tigers against Jinair. No real champions to really put their hands out to be counted when you look at Records, the biggest record is the 4-0 Callista. But Callista probably not going to see play in this series. And they will ban away the Azir. That is the most played for both Lava and Grace. Expect that Talia to be jumping up in priority. Could be first picked if they're happy to take the losing end of a trade of junglers. But the Olaf was the conspicuous one. The Olaf will be banned away. Now it feels like there's diff many different ways this draft could go. As Swain, Swain is available as a red side flex pick. It has been very overpowering, but we've seen it answered a couple of times on the blue side. In the mid lane, something like a Nivea that outranges it can be very strong. It is a power pick. It is strong on 8.5. Again, on the red side, you'd love it, but you can't get it on the red side. It's going to be a blue side Swain flex pick for Rox Tigers. They flash the Skarner there for the moment, but... Something a bit more standard might be coming out here from MT. They're flipping back over to it. I think it's very likely they do go Skarner because it's the more aggressive side, the more mid-game focused side. Okay. They'll lock this one in. Timer runs out, and so does the Skarner onto the rift for Jin Air. And this is very high priority now. Teddy okay. had the Jin banned against him in the series earlier this week by KSV. They're going to take it first round, and you can definitely pile together some tanks and trivialize a lot of the Jin damage. Swain already is going to be at least a health stacker and a healer, let alone maybe getting a lot of armor, but the Zonias will come eventually. Jin onto the rift here. First time we're seeing it from someone that isn't Prey. Prey, yeah. Attack the lane. It seems like Rox Tigers do not want to go for something risky. They just want to go for Caitlyn and lane control on the blue side. Do we see the Thresh into the bot lane as well? Try to get the lockdown there onto the Jin and just have that very powerful bot lane that we saw... KZ, King Zone, very happy to take. I would actually really like the Thresh, as you mentioned. Also denies the Griffin Special, which is what we call the Skarner into Lantern long suppression plays. Yeah. But the Karma is a flex pick. Mid lane Karma is possible. That'll be a rollback of the comp they won with earlier this week. Where it was about the Caitlyn. As game one, sorry, BBQ also. Got a lot of value on you. Remember the comp, the BBQ round, which is all about the Olaf jungle. So we'll wait and see. It is a flex pick. Key does like range supports. And with the Aftershock nerf, you're going to see more of them. But it seems like the Griffin special and also a range support for the Jin laning phase is going to be locked in as Thresh has suddenly become a first round support again. And I couldn't be happier, Achilles. Playmaking is always great to see. As they take their time with that one, but the Thresh does get locked in in the end. Now we're waiting to see what Jin Air is going to be banning away. Karma mid possible. Could also be support, as you said. So Swain and Karma. Giving this ambiguity over to the Rocks Tigers roster so far. Lava was known as a Karma player in 2017 and also when he was a support sub on SKTT1 under the name Taehoon. They will make the, at least for now, educated guess that it will be a mid lane Karma. 
Roxas Jig will be up in the last round. They do have two flex picks so far with the Karma and the Swain. What the ban approach is going to be from Rox Tigers, Jinair lacking in solo lanes. The ban away the safest of the top lanes in the Camille. Denies it from being a true pick comp because Jin Thresh and Skarner is already a very fearsome pick comp on the side of Jinair. Yeah. Any damage allowing for that deadly flourish to get the root. So Tactical Sweep gives you a lot of options. I want to see a lot of tanks from Rox Tigers because they have the Caitlyn, they have the Swain, and they want to deny the power of the Jin. So I think they want to go tanks and banning away the Camille is probably a smart way along that particular tangent. Final ban towards Jinair. Talia is looking like a very safe first round pick on the red side. That's what I would expect would be drafted and then counter pick the top lane tank with something for the side of Jinair. So we'll see if we do see a mid lane ban here or if it's just another top laner, Nara for example. And it's going to be a tank catch. It's going to be the Orn. We see Orn quite often because Orn can put down the call of the Forge Guard while Skarn is taking someone away with the suppression. It's a lot of zone control. So will Jinair just visit the Talia, or will they look at something Ooh. like the Rise, which is also available and would be a flex pick of their own on the red side? Seems like we're sitting around with this one. Omg's just well, saying, yeah, please let it. me jungle safely. I've got the best lanes ever to come for the ganks. Another instant cast CC is added. All right, Rocks, the jig is up. Where are we going with our lanes? What happens if you time it perfectly where you impale somebody and drag them on a realm warp and then get ported? I mean, uh, they must come with you, right? I imagine so. I actually haven't seen the interaction, but that would follow. That'd be an insane play. Something what, tells me it won't be pulled off, but it what could. you're saying is the rise does it early, and the thresh lanterns into yes, it. Exactly. Yes, exactly. There's a lot of there's a lot of combos here. I asked for tanks. We're getting tanks. Yes, we certainly are. Tom Kench coming through, so we'll be that mid Carmo with the Swain up into the top lane, and now just waiting for that final lock in on the Zac. Look to the J4. Will it be our first Jarvan in a very long time in the LCK? He's been completely out of fashion despite dominating in the LPL. And all right, Songwon going back to an old favorite yeah. in the Jarvan. Still a tank. But the sort of champion where if he tries an EQ and gets kited, can just be taken down by the Jin as he tries to get out of a fight. So one-way trip for the Jarvan. But it is early a priority. They're looking oh, at the Darius. Baby. Darius is a very strong laner into the Scion. Would be a decent choice into the Swain. We see our first Darius in the LCK. They have the long hover ticking down. He played the last second He flip. can play the Darius. We might see it. Oh, man. Last second swap over to the Gnar. I'm disappointed. It's just going to be Wraith playing with our hearts here. No Darius, unfortunately. But we'll go ahead and get a very standard pick here for Jin Air. Definitely going for the team fighter and the more... As you say, robust pick in the NAR. They follow the tier list, and that sadly means no Darius after getting so many one-offs in the LCK GB. in 2018. Very powerful pick comp from the side of Jin Air. But only Rise will be consistent damage as the game goes on. Jin will be answered by all the tanks and the shields also in the mid game. Let's see how top lane goes, though, because Swain, if allowed to overextend, can actually push into the NAR. If Skarner comes for multiple visits, though, very, very hard to pull off the Swain when the flash is down. Well, Jenner going for something pretty standard here. The Skarner has been risky in the past. Didn't see it play out in our first series there. Peanut not having a great time with it. Umti, who has been up and down with his own jungle performance, is taking this risk in a very crucial matchup here to upset the Rocks Tigers and deny them playoffs. So many different zones the Rocks Tigers can enact the Ultimate coming through from the Swain. We know all about the Cataclysm. They have a lot of utility, but it is a Caitlyn who has the mid game fall off. If they lose first turret, you feel like Jinnet can rotate around the map and get picks. Whereas Rox Tigers want to take the first turret, roll around with the Caitlyn, who has a Shiv and a BF sword, and take turrets. So it's all about the timings in the early game for Rox. And if Jinnet get going, those timings are disrupted. The RSVP might be missed, and who knows? Maybe Jinnet could take game one. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Jinair versus Rox Tigers taking to the Rift. Our final match in OGN for the regular split. Rox Tigers playoffs hanging in the balance. Let's see if Jinair can get the upset here in game number one.
Damn. The Jenner faithful are here to cheer. They know that there's not much on the line here for this squad. Nice drawing coming through there. Great drawing of Costa John. As there's some Wraith fans in the audience today. And look at that. They even got the uniform. They got right? the Very uniforms nice. ready to go. Wraith gets a lot of praise from the fan girls in particular. Seen as one of the most attractive players in the LCK. Their words, not mine. Uh-huh. Keep lying to yourself. What are you implying over there, Achilles? Ah, uh, nothing. Historically. Just that you're cheating on me. It's six and six, but uh, we already mentioned that the history of that, Achilles, and also this particular series, is irrelevant. <laughs> Papa likes to ignore my feelings. It's what I do best. It's going to be a leash on both sides, so no one's rushing to lane and getting the level two action going. Usually, what the Jin lane wants to do, because Jin getting pushed in has a pretty sad time. Karma versus Rise, just going to be shields versus shields here for the first bit. As they try to scale up. And then eventually the Karma will start do doing some decent damage off the Mantra Qs. Tom Kench picked into Thresh many, many times. Very, very obvious the reason for that. Yeah. But we see Thresh picked into Tom Kench from time to time for reasons other than just the laning phase. Flay gets value in the laning phase. But specifically, if you get out of lane with double ranged, which of course, one of the things Tom Kench isn't is a ranged champion, then you can make the roaming plays happen when Tom Kench isn't. So there is yeah. still a lot of value, despite the fact that in the laning phase, Devourer seems like the ultimate counter. Well, you can see right there, Jin Air knowing that Song Yun is going to be a bit of a unobtainable ta uh, target here. We'll just try to focus down key, but the hook misses. And Song Wan's not a level two gank, but he's going for an adventure. Level three, right as the transformation comes through. Never move, going to pull So on back in. Red buffs here. Wallop will connect. So on, does he have the leap? He's level two. Flashes Goes away, but Song Wan flashes in for the knockup. They'll be they able do. to finish him off in the end. That and was... the red buff ticks him down. First blood goes over to the Rock's Tigers. And yeah, the Linderung Song Wan duo has been around since the Afrika Freak State pulls that off really nicely. It looked unlikely when the first wallop came through. They're able to make it happen. They'll back away. They pick up the first blood and it goes on to the jungler. Big stuff for the side of Rocks. And Song Wan going to be low and empty. is waiting here in the river, but he's going to be spotted out by that ward. So he won't be able to find the J4 for a return kill. Oh. Nice, by the way, Song Wan. Oh boy, this. now he's feeling feisty. He's going to go in. TP coming up here from the top side as empty. He's down to half HP. Lava. Lava. Nearby, does he flash the wall? He really yes, wants he it. does. The tether comes in. He tries to trade one back, but he gets taken down, and it is a disaster. All ready for Jin Air. It's basketball. We've got a double-double going on over here. Everyone's ready to go on the side of Rox's double buff Karma with the fat flash over the wall. Things go from bad to worse for the side of Jin Air. Really nice aggressive stuff. I would say something to back up your reference, but I don't really know much about basketball these days. Well, it's normally a triple-double, too, but you know. I was going to say Song Wan looks like Steph Curry, and Umpty looks like Air Bud. <laughs> I know Air Bud. You haven't seen the film. <laughs> and bot lane's like, what's going on here, guys? We haven't seen Jarvan in forever. He, the Prince comes back onto the Rift and is having quite the regal time so far in the early game. But can he kill the Wolves? Actually, he might not be able to kill the Wolves. Uh, I think he's got it. It's close. You got it, though. If you are an SKT fan, joining us late, trying to work out what's going on is, you know, we talk about SKT for a reason. I tweeted about the sick matchups today and got more interaction on how SKT get through. Reason there is that uh, because of the loss of KSV in our first series, that means that KSV will be out of the playoffs if Rocks win and SKT no longer care about the results today. They already know that if they win tomorrow against Kongdu, they're in. Well, Root goes down there onto Song Yun. Just a little bit of damage, but Teddy is certainly taking the brunt of the trade. That's the potions, however, with the longsword start. We'll just slowly be building back up with the help of that relic shield from Wraith. Teddy's going for the longsword start. Feels like the champion with the most varied starts we've seen in the LCK and the AD carry roll is probably Jin. Yeah. I can name all three Doran's items, because Doran's ring was a thing for a long time there. Blade for a couple of games, but not that common. The shield, of course, through a couple of rounds of buff. Longsword, and of course, the boot start. Yep. So that's five different openers we've seen on the Jin over the course of a couple of years. Doran's shield was the choice from Prey both times he's played it, but it is the longsword here. 100% win rate so far this split because of Prey. Uh, yes, two games from Prey. Will Teddy continue? <laughs> 
You know what? You want to hear something interesting? Ivern has a 100% win rate as well. This is true, but Trick just won't bring it out anymore. I know. Another root coming through here. On to Grace. He'll get locked down. Flag and drag flashed away from. No flash to follow here from Song 1. That would have been a very impressive one if he could pull it off. But Grace will get away, but now he has no summoner spells to speak of. Song 1 has a really big item lead. He actually has the yeah. Ruby Crystal on top of the Skirmisher's Saber. And this is a timing we don't see a lot of teams punish. But if you go against a Boots jungler, which of course is the Predator junglers, want to pick up Boots before they finish Skirmisher's Saber, you have the Skirmisher's Saber damage amp and 20%. Damage reduction, and he's got the Ruby Crystal on top, so you actually have a big combat advantage over the Skarner, who's a little bit hapless pre six anyway. Yeah, Song Wan is in a very nice spot, as it turns out. It was a really risky pick. Zach was the tier list pick you would take here in yeah. Korea. Flipped away from it. And yet, this game is potentially won because of the level three gank being successful on the top side with the electrocute job. So, you take a risk, you're feeling confident, and let me tell you one thing about Rocks today. They do not look in any way awed by the scenario they find themselves in. They have been aggressive, super aggressive, in a must-win match for them. Yeah, Song Wan just taking away this blue buff. Looks like he's going to try to hand this one over to the Karma. Nope. So thanks, thanks for roaming. Thanks for the cover. But I'm just going to go ahead and smite this one out for myself. You'll get the next pass. Not strong enough to hit the Infernal just yet. But definitely some thoughts about it, as Caitlyn can obviously push in this lane and rotate any time. Could go for it, yeah. No level 6 there from Teddy, so won't have the curtain call. They're just fire upon them at a distance. Would draw them in, but they're going to go ahead and play this one a bit slower after the very quick start. As I say that, though, Lava roaming up towards the top side. So Juan is going to be quite far forward, Close but he's the got w. the hop to never move. Or rather, it. that's going to be the eye coming in. So Juan now going to get rooted down. He's nearby and does have level 6. I'll draw him back in this time with another move. As Blenderong finds the kill, and now Umpty in a bad spot. Going to get chunked down. He's got full Low half HP. They might Do they want to just one. dive this they one? Will. The answer's going to be yes. Goes ahead, pops that Demon Flare, and that is another kill going through. 4-0. to zero. Rocks Tigers just winning this one straight out of the top lane. Oh, Achilles, so one had no idea how to play against the Swain. He heavily, heavily messes that up. Watch the replay. Remember, he has Flash available. Doesn't use it at any point. Could have flashed at any point, but he got the... Tug back from the passive from Swain and went down. And then notice that Linderung has full soul fragments, so it's actually going to be real damage when he uses the Demon Flare. It actually chunks for 200 damage, and that is just going to be a lack of experience against the Swain, really counting against Jeanette Greenway. Yeah. The lack of experience with Swain myself, calling the Vision of Empire the Never Move. Just call it the W, it's a silly name. <laughs> Never moves the E. I would think it would be like Vision of the Empire. It's one of those weird things where I had to play a game of Swain myself to fully understand him. He's really weird because while he still zones like he used to before, a lot of his abilities, his W, for example, is just a strange ability. Yeah. Because it has immense range. But there's one area of competitive where it's sick for, and that's checking the Baron. You can check the Baron from way far away. Yeah. And that is really strong. And if you and hit it in lane, damage in. it's pretty good too. Pretty nice one. And the radius has been fixed on that one in the most recent patch, so it's going to be an even wider explosion on it. A lot of ages actually finished for Linderong. He's not wow. worried about amplifying Karma's damage. All right, yep, the nine the nine minute rod of ages. Could be feeling pretty good. Man, KSV fans not feeling so good. The start Certainly of this game. Not. This game is uh, taken off in a way that we couldn't have expected, as everything Rox has touched has turned to gold so far. The Jin airplane has not taken off. That one's still sitting on the runway. Yeah, it needs some repairs, apparently. We got an engine out right now. There's always a game, too. It's uh, going to be about uh, over, but, uh, 30 Jin, minutes, and then we'll test the engine again. Jin already hates tanks, and uh, we're going to have some very beefy men on the side of rocks. Shields also to disregard damage coming through from the Karma. Will be the Archangel's Karma this game. It's left lane. Rise has no accountability on the mid lane as we'll get shoved in by the Karma. Splashes back up, but speed up coming through here from Song Wan. He's going to go in straight with the Cataclysm. Grace flashes over the wall, but the Flag and Drag is there. Yeah. Chase in. Song Wan has a ton of damage to offer up, but Umti now coming nearby. Realm Warp comes through. He'll go ahead and jump to the side, but here comes the pinch from uh -oh, Linderong. Coming. Vision comes down. Linderong looking to poke his way in. He's going to go ahead with the Demonic Ascension. It's firing away, and now Umti may be the one in a bad spot. Any more CC and they'll get the tug. That's going to be Vision of Empire coming down. Flash away from him. He does take him to safety. Grace in the meantime. Just going to be 
Recalling there in the brush, so we'll make it out with their lives, but Summoner Spells burn. The most fearsome Swain we have seen in a long time. Got the first control over the top lane where he's able to walk over. We'll get the Rift Herald from this, or at least give it a start. Everyone is accelerated on the side of rocks. Already Cinderhulk, complete for the Jarvan. And all Jinna can hope to do is loss minimization, because there's really no wins to be had around the rift. We're back to classic Jin Air 2016. Put your heads between your leg and just hope you hold out until the 40 minute mark. Or you think of Jin Air 2018, which is if we stuff up the early game, in Teddy we trust, but can't trust a Jin the same way you can trust some of these other AD carries. Yeah, such as a Sivir. I'm deep walking over, maybe looking for the steal, but he's not going to find it, but can at least deny the pickup, perhaps. Nope. Let's just go ahead. Let's it actually away. lasts a really long time, so it if does. you want to shepherd it, it takes too long, and they would have lost the extra items on the side of rocks. Key even walked over. Guarantee the pickup. We haven't seen the turret HP in a while, but I would imagine it's relatively healthy for now, outside of maybe the bot lane. The thing is, there's not even a punish on that. There's not the Rift Herald being taken by rocks, and then the Infernal traded in favor of Jin Air. Instead, it could just be Rock's Tigers claiming both of these early objectives. So, Juan's looking for the play Holds here. The down. wall comes down. Umpty going to be jumping in. That's going to be the Impale coming through. And Linderong, yeah, he's going to die. So finally, Jin Air put a kill on the board. Still going to be behind by 1,000 gold here. But this does alleviate some pressure up top. Soan's going to have an extra little bit of gold. And now he can push in the wave. It all was down. So no ability to turn there. No 1v2 coming through from this particular Swain. Doesn't use summoners. Smart of Linderong. But no Impale used either. So... Just a free kill to the side of Jin Air. First good news story for them. Comes around 12 minutes. Back away. The gold lead is not severe. Bot lane turret hasn't been broken either way. While it did feel like we were very early eulogizing the side of Jin Air. Who knows? Potentially there are some ways it can get back into game number one. Well, clearing out the vision around the river means rocks. Very likely to look for this Infernal. Nice ward, though. We'll spot it here. It's going to be a cheeky one. You can see the rotation coming through here. Rock and Teddy cut off. So won't be able to jump in there yet, but now they see Umpty and Lava is just trying to gate them out as best as he can. Teleport available on both top laners. A lot of vision thrown down here. So Jenner does see this. It's very low. Hook going to go wide. TP now coming through. Cataclysm out there from Song 1, but the Impale immediately drops in on top of the J4, but the Devourer is there from Q to help keep him in the fight. Song in the meantime, he gets taken down first and foremost, but now with the Swain arrival, it's going to be a double kill going over to Linderong. They're looking for more. The root won't connect on the Soan. He hops away in time, and Rock should still be able to scoop this up in the end. It's a two-for-one trade plus the Infernal. Yeah, Song Yin hopefully out of, hopelessly out of position, but Linderong delivered into the middle of the fight. He got that Rod of Ages early. He's very strong, and the Rift Held will be put mid lane. So winning this fight gets them the Infernal, but this is an even bigger prize. Got yeah, that turret. Going to be going down here. No one even close to wrapping around to defend this. So one going to be found in the jungle, but going to be taking up on the, the Gnar that they can't go forward for the kill. But they'll get a nice little extra bit of damage here onto the Tier 2 from the next charge, just prepping it for later. And first Brick now goes over to Rock Tigers alongside that Drake. This could be a game just one around the Swain. We watched the replay and watch Song Yoon here, who actually doesn't get hooked by Raid but ends up being heavily caught out in the back of the fight. Flay, the team was just not thinking about the back line. They were focused on the front line. But then Linderon comes in, and already there is no answer at all to Swain. You look at the rework, and the thing that I think was lost is that Swain doesn't drain mana with the ultimate anymore. He just walks around. He's able to use all of his skills, and he is able to create a zone of control, a mobile one that not many other champions can do. Not many champions are able to set up a zone and then move it. You think of Equalizer, it's in one place. Yeah. The ball moving from Orianna is a lot of her power. Swain, especially from ahead, is doing a lot of damage and forcing the movement of Jin Air. And if he can run at three people and zone them, they will win basically every team fight. Yeah, CSP damned. He's 4-1-2 uh, there, so he's going to be quite far ahead of so on and in a fantastic spot so far. 100% kill participation for the Swains. So like you said, could be a victory just completely revolving around Lucius Malfoy, I guess. It's almost like old Maokai, right? Where Maokai could put on the ultimate and move the zone of damage reduction. And speaking of zones... Yeah, Teddy going to take a big chunk as that lantern will go ahead and peel back as Umpty looks for Song Wan, but can't get him. Impale is cancelled because of the movement from the flag and drag. Doesn't put it on cooldown. The Zach, Zach, Let's, the Zach Let's Bounce really trolls 
the Skana. That interaction doesn't happen with other champs. As Indurung is down in CS, but that's because he's been roaming and finding plenty of advantages around the map. Pushing in, they're looking to cut off Grace. Abyssal Voyage comes through. The Realm Warp's thrown down, and he <laughs> just gets inside of it in the last second. So Song One burns the flash. So that play not without consequence. Grace does not. So Grace gets out. Only Realm Warp on cooldown. They'll push through the mid lane. No harm, no foul. Mid lane turret will be returned to plenty of times, trying to gank the Rise, who is cooped up in the mid lane, but splitting CS with a Karma. Which, if this game goes 35 minutes, could be very relevant given that Karma is pretty front-loaded in her power. You see here, up top, with the Rod of Ages nearly fully stacked, so on. Still taking a bit of damage here, even with the Spectre Scowl. See, a very scary Swain. He's mad. Double control ward, bottom side for the Karma. Means very easy for her to push up. Lava on a big walk, trying to relieve pressure from other lanes, clearing out Blast Cones. Swain has Flash this time, and Ultimate, so even a 2v1 is not 100% guaranteed to pick up a kill. First AP build Swain we've seen in a while. I guess the first Swain we saw was ADD, who went Rod of Ages and Rylai's. We'll wait and see where this Blasting Wand is going, because my first thought is Rylai's. Could be Leandris as well. Let's go Void Staff. I would say Void Staff is 0%. <laughs> Leandris is a pretty decent chance. Do more and more damage as you stay in combat. QSS already picked up by Key. Wants to be the evacuation for the Skarner. He's ready to go. Put the team before his own items. <laughs> we want to talk about builds. Teddy has also gone for the new standard. We do not see the Yoma's Ghost Blade build in Korea anymore. It has been Essence Reaver, Rapid Fire Cannon, into likely an Infinity Edge as the standard build. Makes the fourth shot very fearsome, of course. Loop up, hand off there for Grace. Picks that one up, multiple members. Hovering around the bottom side, including Umpty, who's now rotating in. They have that control ward, so they know he can enter the brush unseen. So far, he's being a bit hesitant to push in. In the wings, doesn't have that realm warp up quite yet, but still could just roam straight down the river to join in the rest of the squad. Auto crab control is pretty important, but it's gonna be hard oh. for Rock Tigers to pick up with so many members of Jinair here first. T on the hunt, skates them back as they get the scuttle crab. Gonna be Black Cleaver here, so not a full tank Jarvan, not going for war marks, going for the Black Cleaver is Song One, biggest mid game spike possible. Still no confirmation on the Swain, but well, I'd love to see the Rylai's. I am thinking it's going to be Leandris. So fast, walking between lanes. A lot of auto attacks already put in by Linderam. He is uh, chunking down this turret, and now is zoning so on back. And they'll just be able to force this one out in the end. Even through the backdoor bonus. Going to pick it up. Oh, Song One, however, he's going to be face checking. Flag and drag takes him back, and MT couldn't get the impale off in time. Damage is also pretty minute from the rise right now. Yeah. So threat's not quite there, but you face check the wrong brush and enough foes are there. You will go down. Trying to turn this into a red buff steal as well. All 10 members in the red side jungle of Jyn'Air. Red buff handed off. Teddy just a bit too late with the deadly flurs to try to get that confirmed for himself. Now it's just down here into the mid lane. Rocks just roaming as a unit. They just want to go straight to the Ocean Drake and pick it up. You know they have to be as fire. They can't go for a teleport because they don't own the pit after the Scuttle Crab Vision was picked up by Jyn'Air earlier. So on, looking for a teleport. He has a very large Narbar. Yeah, he is pretty much stacked up here. Ocean Drake will go over. Can Rocks escape? And Hill comes down, but it's denied by the Devourer from Key. Now they're going to look Swain. for the re-engage. Cataclysm comes down, flash out from Wraith. Takes himself to safety, and Teddy is just trying to get out onto the backside. No summoner spells available there for that Jin. Song Wan chasing forward here. So on flashes away, but the double root comes down, and they pop the Gnar. Linderok yes. really knows Swain, apparently, as the damage range of Swain can troll he the majority of people. Unrelenting. He is so mad that he lost his house elf. You wonder if it was worth the flash to pick up a single kill, but it will allow the turret to come in, and that being the final point of consideration. 
is important for the side of Rock. Seeing some recalls. Turret is low. Nindarang's calling them away. Wants to solo it down. They're trying to put as much gold onto this Swain as possible. Yeah, he is just going to go ahead and rip this one apart. Has to wait for the next wave, however, to finish it off. But should be able to get it in the end. But he knew the engage was going to happen because So One was teleporting in with almost 100% Nar on the Nar bar. But as they go in, the start, it looks like it's not going to happen because there is no more of the force pulls coming through. The passive not going to be used from Swain until he goes in and makes it happen himself. Get onto So One, they burst him down. And with solo gold on the bot lane out of turret, he's picking up a big item, that's for sure. Yeah. Straight up Leandri's coming through from the Swain. Not often that the top laner tells the bot lane to just go back to base. I need this solo gold. But he's going to buy a big item from it and actually launches himself halfway through to Azonia's as well. This is the Swain of your nightmares in game number one. Yeah, this is absolutely disgusting. Four, one, and three now still at that 100% kill participation. And he's even caught up in CS with so on, who was inching ahead of him. Just trying to draw back, you know, some amount of gold that Linderong had gotten from the kills and the assists. But now he is just surging forward, and you just have to be terrified of this guy. Probably, what, most impressive Swain we've seen since summer of 2016? Well, we did see BDD turret dive two That's times true. straight up. That's true. BDD's, okay, you got me there. BDD was pretty damn But for the impressive. AP stack, because that was a tank Swain. This yes. is an AP stacking Swain. So the burst Swain, definitely the first time in a while. Is, we're going for the Griffin through. Special. That's going to be the land turn, but the Flag and Drag takes him halfway back out, and the hook just a little bit too late there to interrupt that one. So. Hey, it looked good, but sadly the Griffin Special doesn't oh, get a kill. Oh, it looked cool. It's like when you get a Ballista pull, but then it just leads to nothing. The turret is still going to get sieged down. Rox Tigers continue to advance the pace of this game. 22 and a half minutes in. Four turrets taken. Jinner have zero. It's just so hard to deal with them because they're not interested in anything other than 4v4 or 5v5. They will not let themselves be outnumbered. Key has already shown with his flash devour in the earlier fight that he is on point with denying any sort of engage. They roll through with two item Caitlyn. And outside of an all-in, that may just be a one-way trip to a loss in game one. Jinnair doesn't have much going on. And now, with that turret that has already been prepped, it will finish that one off. That's two inners taken in one swift motion there within 30 seconds. As the Rock Tigers just continue to surge forward, now rotate down to the bottom side. The wave has been prepped by the Swain. The Narong says, welcome, guys. I'm willing to share this one with you. And they should just break everything outside of the base here for Jinnair. Caitlyn, Karma is becoming the new Bannon in terms of just group together and take things with little to no counterplay available for the side of Jinnair. Sort of thing that we mentioned, Jinnair gets Snowball going, they could win the game. We saw Rox Tigers pick up the Snowball in a big way with Swain just being over the edge so early in terms of his items and the advantages they got. So we shouldn't be surprised that two items are pinged on the Caitlyn and the Karma, they group and all the turrets around the map are basically taken in one fell swoop. Not many more to go. Just five turrets remaining. And I'm sure Jinnair desperately wants to hold on to those. But now, pushing out of the base becomes that much riskier. They have a slight little window of time here to push forward, try to get some vision down, specifically around the Baron buff. But already you can see Rox has returned to the vicinity, and they're going to start clearing forward, deny vision away from Jinnair, and just leave it up to question as to whether or not the Baron has been started. Some really big item problems. 2,300 gold behind is the Gnar, who has most of a Spirit Visage and a Black Cleaver. He can't really lane against the Swain, and he definitely can't out-team fight the Swain, so no, he's not, a lot got, not got a lot going on there. Swain himself is in the bot lane. Let's teleport up, and so on only soon will have his to answer. Swain wants to pick up a Zonia, so we'll have it on the next back, but hasn't shopped just yet. I feel like the Skarner is probably something that people should stray from these days. It's just a bit too high risk, high reward. And in this moment here with Jin Air, able to deny Rox Tigers something as big as playoffs, you would think you would think that something as consistent as possible would have been what they were drafting for. Rox walking up, they got the Inspire Shield always basically off cooldown. Athenes and the Arden Sensor complete for full utility. Oh, hook there on the to Lava, but the Devourer comes in. Now the Impale, the Devourer not available for Song 1. He goes in, massive Cataclysm, goes golden, will be taken down. Linderong. Big chunk of damage coming through. Now Linderong cheating forward, pops at the Demonic Ascension. 
starts trying to zone them back, but so far they haven't been able to get any hits in onto that inhibitor, and that's going to be the curtain call coming through, but well, the shields are there. Song Yoon, he won't even take a lick of damage. Yeah, the crowd actually laughs at the damage coming through onto the Inspire shield because there needs to be backup for the Jin. He needs to not be dealing with tanks, and the shields make everyone a tank, so that's a problem. They were able to get a single pick with the Skarner ultimate that time, but all that bought them was a bit more time with their inhibitor. The inhibitor turret has gone down. Rox Tiger can afford to back away. They can afford to shop. And they can start a Baron setup that Jinnah will have to all in to try to hold. Karma's dumb. Is what we've learned, basically. Lava. Can shield himself, can shield the entire team in one fell swoop just by popping the mantra alongside it. He's got the Seraphs for even more shielding. Look, at the end of the day, you can describe any champion. They sound really dumb, and we know that Karma's <laughs> about execution in the mid game, and they had the execution this game, Achilles. They were well on top in the early game, thanks to Song Wan, his aggressive plays around top. And now, you look at the company and say, well, how can you possibly do anything? They've got all the shields, they've got all the damage, everything's going for them. That was the hard work in the early game, and it's paying off for them where we expected it to, yeah. around the mid game. There so. are asterisks to it, of course. The only thing that would have made this maybe slightly more disgusting is, is if Song Yun was playing a cog ball, and they had still managed to get to this point unhindered. I like the way they approached it, though, with the Caitlyn. Again, Caitlyn is seeing plenty of play recently because of her power in laning, and so much laning focus in the duo lane. But Jin Air reached very early for the Jin, and it gave too much time for Rock's Tigers to say, how about some more tanks? How about some more health? And sadly, Jin can do many things, but that's not one of them. And it also doesn't represent a late game hyper carry in the traditional sense for Teddy to hard carry if the game gets extended, which right now is looking unlikely to happen. Yeah. And not going to be having the wave clear performance that he would need to replicate something like the 94 minute game. Hey! But here we go, we got another one. And that's going to be dragging him straight into the base. And Song Wan has disappeared. So if nothing else, they can keep pulling this one off. Man, you're going to have a great highlight reel of Griffin specials here <laughs> from Jin Air. They make another one where that was even further than I could have ever have imagined. And okay, we need to see the Rise Ultimate for science. Very nicely done. From downtown, they just make Song Wan disappear. Wraith, however, getting chunked out, takes that Q to the face. He's going to be low. Still has the flash available, should he need to invest it. He's currently trying to regenerate. Remember, no Skarna ult up, so not a lot of threat coming from Jin Air. Yeah, Grace is trying to poke around the backside, but they could just turn straight over onto him. Shielding comes out, one more hit. Takes down that in him. Root comes through, but no one can push forward to lock down Song Yun, as you say. So on, it's just been building up, trying to get this Gnar bar, but. Now there's limited terrain for him to collide with as they rotate over to the top side. Wave is already prepped. It is amusing. They lost a member and walked up and took the inhibitor. And they're just like, all right. Thanks. But Swain is kind of two to three people at this point, so they're showing a lot of respect to him. Impale will be up in about 15 seconds. There's a wave coming through. This is going to be the sun coming in. Actually doesn't find the wall. Gets the wall up there, but only on to key. In the meantime, Linderong has just had this demonic ascension running. They go ahead and try to work down this turret. A couple more shots here from Song Yun with the help of the shields should be able to do it. My eyes fully dilate. Every time a Swain walks up with full soul fragments, I might like, wait, this could be all of the damage. Wait, wait for the pop. But they also fully dilate on the side of Jin Air, so they lose the second inhibitor turret. They know Demonic Ascension's on cooldown, so there might be a fight that Jin Air win from this. We'll have to see, but uh, maybe, maybe not. not after that as the Gnar <laughs> just gets popped. So yeah, exhausted, doesn't have any Narmar built up. He's very squishy. He'll die, a another inhibitor will fall, and it's probably just gonna be a Baron to the Rocks Tigers. Fall back to it, they can pick it up very quickly as well. When it comes to checks on the side of Jin, uh, of Jin Air, they do have the Deadly Flourish, which will lead to a Comet proc, and thus let them know someone is there, and also the Blue Trinket, which has now been used by Teddy. You can also just Realm Warp in there. You know, checking with your face is one way to go. I like return trips, Achilles. <laughs> I'm not into these one-way trips. One-way flight. But the one-way flights from Jinner are so cheap. They actually did use the run. Aha! Well, whatever thrifty savings you can get, I don't know if you can budget something together when you are 10,000 gold behind to answer just the unanswerable power on the side of Rock's Tigers. Needless Large Rod is already completed for Linderong. Two Needless Large Rods for Karma. That's three. It's quite needless, but it is certainly representing a lot of power. And while there is the three-item core complete onto Teddy, We've already seen that an, a team-wide Inspire Shield laughs at the Jin damage. So Rox Tigers 
All about closing out this game one and focusing on game two and then their playoffs match in one week. If they're able to pick up this series. See that, you know, Lava just wants to make the shields bigger and better as he builds up for the Rabbitin's death cap. So not only will he be offering up a significant amount of damage onto the likes of Teddy, but uh, yeah, the shields just aren't going to be going away anytime soon. Right now, All right. deep playing in the darkness. We're ready for another Skarner. Let's do this. Comes back around the other side. Vision going to be denied, but I know where he is. They would love to get Song Yun. That'd be the dream. But Devour is right next to the entire team. They do not really want to get the, the Swain, that's for sure. Yeah, dragging him in would actually oh. be very bad as Grace. Good God, just takes half of his HP. Yep, this is uh, definitely tipped too far away from Jinnah. The Predator's on cooldown now. They'll lose a third inhibitor. They won't even be fighting for it. Mark Tigers don't have their minion waves in order, but they certainly have their damage online. Sangyun's still playing inside the base on his lonesome here. Three in hips dead. Super Creep's pushing in from all sides. Jin Air is going to be slowly choked out of this game. Hook comes through. Whoa, Power that was, is there. Uh, visual lag there. That was a bit of an odd one. Uh, Song Wan, though, keep that Q to the face. He'll still be all right. He can stick around. Lava just keeping everybody topped up as Jin Air desperately tries to clear out the waves. But more Super Creeps just keep on coming. The first Nexus turret is down below half HP. A few more hits here from Song Yun. We'll take it out. The hook doesn't connect. And Grace is getting out traded by that Caitlyn. Most people will be Achilles. It's probably only the Swain going to be avoiding that. Second Nexus start goes down. Teddy opening up here with the curtain call, but he's basically just tickling the members of the Rock Tigers as the Nexus turrets are all gone. They have really nothing to fear other than that Lantern Impale combo here from the side of Jin Air. Instant cleanse coming through there off of that hook. Now at least they don't have the minions, so are they going to actually force a fight? A oh, wait on the minion wave. We're waiting for Rock's Tigers. So on pushing forward, gets a stun there onto the Swain. The Impale comes down as well as he tries to get it back into the fountain, but now it's going to be the Demonica Sentry. And Song Yun has already turned things around by taking down the Nar. The Drunk flashes away. He'll stay alive and in the fight. Full charge is ready to go. We'll see if we get a nice explosion of damage to finish off this game, or if it's just going to be slow and steady. Teddy gets a nice little pop there at the end. But that's still just going to be game number one. Just shy of 33 minutes on the clock. Rocks Tigers one step closer to sealing the deal. Lovely stuff from the top side of the map. Lin Durang and Song Wan, the true MVPs in this game, carrying them through the early game, putting Jin Air in a huge deficit. Then Caitlyn emerged with a Karma Shield and two items and did the rest. Really nice play from the Rocks Tigers, echoing the great play we saw from them against KSV earlier in the week. And they may heap scorn onto KSV. We mentioned that if Rocks Tigers win, they're in. If SKT beat Kongdu Monster, they're in. And that means that KSV will be the odd man out. That's why we saw so much emotion from Crown. Yep. And while Jin Air, on the right day, can beat Rocks, Rocks Tigers have been peaking at the right time. And they look set to take the series over Jin Air because game one was straightforward for them. Now, very easy to get that ball rolling, the early gank over towards the top side. And they basically won it out from the top side. The first four kills were just umpty and so on, going down twice each. And it just didn't seem like they were ready for the Swain. Honestly, it seemed too easy. Uh, yeah. Not really recognizing the power of the Swain mechanics, not understanding how much damage a five soul fragment Swain can do. They're not going to be confident on it. Just ban it away. Everyone else is. And it was just too easy for Jinnah to roll through the top lane to victory. Well, one more box to check off here for the Rocks Tigers. Close this out with a 2-0. They can hold their heads high, riding into the playoffs, shutting down KSV. And then just waiting to see who the final opponent is going to be, whether it's SKT or not. But here we go. Game two going to be coming up after the break, guys. We'll see if this is going to be a nice 2-0 or if Jin Air still have some fight left in them. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. You took off your mask. Now it's like you are.